Anton Lee. Ilya Framanov. And the battle for the interim for the weight championship of the world. Jonathan Tabella. Daniel Mini T. Williams. Kickboxing gold on the line. The Thai superstar Tawin Chai. Smoke and Joe out of work. Look at the ferocity. Martial arts, all sorts of disciplines at the very highest levels. Right through the city like Brennan Shaw. I'm on a mission to get it all. Right through the city like Brennan Shaw. If you ain't thick, please don't get involved. And now, Brandon Thick Boy Shaw. What is poppin', fam? It is Monday morning, October 2nd. It is 9 a.m. in this brisk, brisk. Um, I guess Calabas this morning. That's right. I forgot where I was at for a second. Cool. That's cool. That's great. Grand. Wonderful. What's going on, everybody? How are you guys doing? We are live once again. I am fresh off the plane from Las Vegas, Nevada, where your boy was at Skank Fest. Um, I'm sure we'll break it down more on Firing the Kid, but it was a phenomenal time. Um, if you look at my Instagram posts, I had reservations about going i was you don't have to go to it jen i okay. just that confused me um it was just a great time um i was definitely uh hesitant about going and uh boy am i glad that uh i didn't post out and that i went because um best county festival i've ever been part of i've, I've been at you know all of them uh, you name it your boy's been in these comedy festivals and this is hands down the best one i think just the environment uh, Luis Gomez created the, the comics. It's not so like weird networking where people are worried to mess up and, you know, cause you have big networks there and it's like this whole kind of, you know, the, these other kind of festivals are just, they've changed, man. But, uh, when it comes to uh, skank fest, <clears throat> it's all for the fans, which I think makes the, the biggest difference. And boy, do they have some loyal fans and, uh, yeah, I, I went into the lion's den and, um, Played around with some lions in uh, Lewis and Big J and Dave Smith and Annie Letterman and just all these monsters. Joe List is there. Uh, De Stefano came by. Tim Dillon. You just got monsters upon monsters. And uh, I brought Big J Shab with me, which uh, didn't make too much sense because you know he's the the tour manager so he sells the whiskey sells merch well we weren't doing that there i literally brought him just in case i was attacked that's how nervous i was and boy was it we did not need i'm glad jay came because you know we have so much fun together on the road but um we he, he wasn't needed the the fans were so dope so cool and you know gomez told me that dave smith told me that big jay told me that but you know they say that I'm like, yeah, that's, they're nice to you guys. You know, Be, people are mean to me, but uh, shout out to the skank fest fan base, man. It was, it was on real. It was on real. I will always do skank fest. Like I said, on my Instagram post, I will never not do it. I'd always, uh, always be an honor to be part of it. So just glad I did it, man. And the, the live uh, podcast that we shot with Legion of skanks um, and firing the kid, uh, we should have that file. Uh, hopefully this week, I would assume. That's what I'm told, and then we'll, we up, we'll upload that like a regular episode. So uh, it was a fun one. It was a special one, man. So it was a grand old time. But So shout out to Skankfest. Lewis, you're the best. Big J, Dave, love you guys. Uh, prior to that, though, I uh, Big J Shab flew into L.A. because we drove from L.A. to Sacramento because uh, I have this whole car project going on, turning my uh, Dodge Ram TRX <clears throat> ram it's really not dodge but ram sorry guys uh turn it into a uh basically a, a demon trx over a thousand horsepower at the crank all right not the wheels be cool at the crank uh it should be around 1100 1050 ish by the time i get it back but i sought out this place overkill in sacramento california you know, five and a half hour drive. There's a million car shops around here, but I went to them for, uh, this is all they do. This is what they do. Josh, the, the owner of Overkill, has the best track record as far as reliability, maintenance. Just He has an outstanding track record. So that's why I drove five and a half hours at 6 a.m. to seek this dude out. And uh, this got a good thing going on. That we, we shot all of it. I got a 
we're gonna have some dope content coming but um should be done about two weeks i would assume but uh just wait for it because now i got a million ideas got a dope idea for a car show so stay posted for that i'll be posting content all uh during the lead up for that but that's gonna be a fun one but uh as far as the fight world goes i was in vegas and whenever you're in vegas we couldn't figure out why hotels were so expensive it's because uh the most famous person on this side of the pond that puts on those 10 ounce gloves or uh boxing gloves since he's lighter weight i think they're still tens could be eights i think they're tens um uh, his name is canelo alvarez and he was fighting saturday night against uh jamel charlo so Vegas is popping when he's in town. So that's why the hotel prices were through the roof. He fought T-Mobile Arena. Um, I got done at Skank Fest Saturday night. I think my last set, I had three sets that day. I think my last set was around 7. So me and Jay rushed back to our hotel and uh, got it on his uh, iPad. Um, I want my money back. I want my money back. Um, and not because of Canelo, because... Um, and I'm a Jamel Charlo fan. I like the Charlo brothers. They're great. Um, worked with them. The nice guys in the world. So talented. But Jamel Charlo, um, if you look at Terrence Crawford's tweet, he got it right. Like, Jamel just showed up not to get knocked out. He came in not to lose. He didn't want to become a meme. He didn't want to be a highlight on Canelo's, you know, um, record. That's all, that's all he, he – so there was no risk involved – he played it safe the whole time. He, you know, he really didn't take many chances, wasn't that active. You know, when you're down eight rounds, nine rounds, it's time to open up, and there's just none of that. And then when they interviewed him, he goes, this is boxing. At least I didn't get knocked out. You're like, oh, if that's your mentality going in, we're screwed. I wish he would have sent the press conference. No one would ever do this, but I wish going in, he'd be like, guys, I'm going to play it safe. I'm just try not trying to get knocked out. I'm like, oh, I'm not paying for that. I want my $80 back, Charlo. That I'm not paying for that. And this is one of the issues with boxing. And uh, Nina Drama, Nina Drama on Twitter, I think it is. I think it's the same as Instagram. But Nina Drama put out, she goes, and she got, you know, obviously you're going to rile up the boxing heads when you do this. She goes, you can't tell me that uh, a main event in boxing this year has done better than a main event in the UFC. I, I was coming to think of it, I'm like, yeah, she's not, especially this year. Especially this year. That, that That's the problem with boxing. And. I love boxing. Absolutely love boxing. The sweet science, fantastic. You're batshit crazy if you think a uh, big boxing pay per view is better than than an MMA pay per view. From top, also don't, let's not even talk top to bottom. Let's not even start with a UFC main event, especially the main events that the the main cards. Sorry, not main event, but the main cards coming up, like these next big pay per views compared to boxing. Name the undercard of Francis versus Tyson Fury. How about the undercard of Canelo and Charlo? The co-main events, they're, they're usually pretty decent. But outside that, them boys getting paid 500 bucks. And you all want to complain about our sport? It's not even close. Look at the UFC. It's so juicy. You got UFC 294, Makhchev, Charles Oliveira, part two. Two of the best on the freaking planet. You also got Hamzat Polo Costa on that freaking card, which is insane. You have Curtis Blades, Almeida coming up. That's just a fight night. Don't worry about that. That will still get more views than any free boxing fight. Uh, then you have John Jones versus Stipe. Do that. Come on. And that's in November. And then you got um, you got Leon Edwards, Colby Covington on that sick, sick, sick December 16th card. Uh, you got Pantoja, Brandon Roy Val, uh, Shavkat, uh, Rachmanov, St Stephen Wonderboy Thompson, Tony Ferguson, Patty Pimlet, Vicente, Vicente Luque, and Ian Machado Gary. Take my goddamn money. And you wonder why. And he, he, here's where I'm going with all this. You guys can argue on, on social media, oh, UFC this and boxing's better. HBO left the boxing game. Showtime left the boxing game. Nobody's making any money. So we want to knock on Dana. You need to pay the fighters more. You need to do this. Yeah. Do the boxing blueprint. How's that worked out for anybody? Trust me. If, if HBO, Showtime, these other big networks were making money, they would be in the game of boxing. Remember, Dana was going to do boxing. Why didn't he? Because it's a shit show. 
There's nine different promotions. The, this guy has this belt. There's all these different weight class. There's no stars. It's not even clo- it's not even a competition anymore. It's a 10-8 round for MMA. And I love I absolutely love boxing. Tyson Fury is my favorite combat sport athlete on the planet. He's my favorite. Him and Josh would be great. Him versus Usyk would be insane. But I'm I'm talking about as far as consistent like entertainment value, it's this isn't a conversation. I know it's going to upset some of you boxing heads out there. It's not it's not a conversation. It's not even close. So this is Aaron Bronstetter said, I can come for, uh, this, he, and, but he's just retweeting. He goes, uh, I can confirm that Showtime will not be continuing their boxing schedule oh. after 2024, following a number of conferences, calls across the pond over the past. Uh, I can attest that Showtime will be pulling the plug on boxing after 37 years in the in- industry. Here's a full one here if you want to. But that's, so that's a, an analyst for boxing. Roth? Yeah. Yep, yep. This is pretty well known. I mean, this isn't like breaking news. We mm-hmm. knew that anybody in the... F- combat sports space knew this was happening yeah uh and then this dude goes on and goes top boxers ask for too much guaranteed money on top of paper you percentage just killing the sport they need to stick to percentage cuts what you make depends on what the fight nets with expert eyes on expenses of course that way no money is lost to all the other parties correct when you look at these guys how much money they're making it's it's and, and then they also it's like their own promote name a main boxer who doesn't have his own promotion so it might be with Showtime, yeah, but it's under also this promotion. It's with Canelo or it's with a Tank Davis. Tank has his own promotion. So in their con- the production, the money, they're taking the lion's share of it. So Showtime, HBO, Staples in the sport, they're out. I guess you have, what you have left is Fox. They're still involved a little bit. You got DAZN, which has been a train wreck. <laughs> Yeah, I heard it like if Showtime does do boxing again, it'll be just one offs. It won't be like Showtime boxing. It'll just be no, no Showtime's done. Yeah. No, I, I heard it. I read yeah. it. Yeah, Showtime's done. Done. No, I read that the, if they do it again, it'll just be one offs. It's not going to be like a, a no. There's no thing. consistent yeah, yeah. thing. Yeah, yeah. But and that's that's where boxing's going. You know, they're doing basically. Everyone wants to give the Paul brothers shit, but they're but they're basically doing what they're doing, where they're just going to sell to the highest bidder. So Tank Davis or. Crawford, even though you know he has a, a deal with uh, someone right now, but these guys are gonna be they're gonna be one offs. Mm. So you know it's gonna be tough to keep up with it. It's not good, and here's why this sucks: because if you're a young upcoming boxer, there's there's not a lot of ways to get built now. There's no way to get hype unless you happen to luck out and get as a coming event or on the undercard on one of these one offs. But as far as like building the resumes, building the rosters. Having talent, grooming the talent, that's those days are it for it's a this is terrible for boxing. Terrible for boxing. For all we're concerned about is the bottom line, which it, it is a business at the end of the day. This is terrible for the young boxers. Look at MMA. Look at just the UFC itself. You have just see you have the ultimate fighter you can get, you know, work in. You have Dan White Contender series. Then there's the actual UFC. And then think how many people are, are are on the rosters in every weight class. It, it's just insane. You look, and look at MMA in general. Look at one championship. Same rosters are stacked, dude. Stacked. There's fight nights. There's contender series. The Ultimate Fighter. One championship has a bunch of cards. There's ways to do this. There's other organizations get built up on where people can see you. In boxing, what are you gonna do? So the, the Jake Pauls, the Logan Pauls of the world, right? So in all, you look at Francis Tyson Fury. That's on ESPN. That's an ESPN pay-per-view. That's a one-off. So now these guys are going to be the highest bid, bid, bidder. Well, what if I'm just a stud of a talent, but I'm not great on social media? Where do you go? So th- this is where, again, it's a business, but it's going to kill the sport because now – these sharks at the top, which all, you know, the promoters, businessmen, they're sharks. Now they're just looking where to make the most money. But what happens when you do that, the young talent, they, they, they go to the wayside. They just go to the wayside. Because now it's like, all right, who has the most Instagram followers? Who has, it's not about talent anymore. It's mm-hmm. not good. It's not good. It's a big, big problem, man. If you're boxing, you should be worried. When HBO Showtime drops out, it's not good. It's not good, man. And then also when you get like the the Canelo and the uh, Charlo fight, not good. 
When one guy doesn't want to, you know, he's just there for a payday. Okay. I mean, the fight was, he's just like, God damn it. And Charlo has a talent too, right? It's just so much talent. Yeah. But, he, you know, he did take it. He is he stepped in for his brother. Yeah. For his brother. It's two weight classes above him. I get it, dude. But you got you, you to gotta give us something, man. Because you wouldn't watch that and then be like, man, I want to see that guy do it again. Let's say, and it's Canelo. So he's the most famous guy on this side of the pond. There's an argument, you know, he's the biggest boxer in the world. But definitely on this side of the pond. You got your Tyson Fury, your Anthony Joshua is cool. But on this side, it's all Canelo all day. There's so many Mexicans out here, right? Everywhere. They love, even non Mexicans. Who doesn't love Canelo? Yeah. He's one of the greatest to ever do it. it may, possibly the best, biggest Mexican boxer of all time. Julio Chavez G- Sr. is probably. It's one A, one B, whatever you want to do it, but you'll get Canelo's resume. It's 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 insane. So his fan base tuned in. You think they're gonna jump over and watch the Charlo fight, his next fight? I'm like, no, hell no. They don't respect that. So it, it didn't do anybody any good. It's a it was a, such a bummer. Such a bummer. Mm-hmm. Such a bummer. But I'll tell you what wasn't a bummer. It was one championship. My God, dude. 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 I, I, I was messaging our group text. I was like, this is probably one of the best cards I've seen, especially this year. You know, one of the best cards ever. Not to, uh, they're, they're becoming undeniable. Yeah. And Chatri said something that made a lot of sense. You know, and he's not telling, again, they're all promoters. So they're, they're going to take some shots at, the, you know, obviously UFC's the big dog in America. So he's going to compare it to that. That's what you want to do. So he just said the difference and one of the reasons why one championship is so entertaining is because we have world-class strikers. He goes, and when the guys get, and he had a good point. He goes, when guys get to the UFC, they're not known for their strike and they're division one wrestlers. And then they learn to strike and then they're three and oh, four and oh, the UFC signs them. They're learning to strike when they get to the UFC. He goes, if you look how many world champions we've had in striking crossover, can come over to one championship. You know, there, there, there's probably a hundred. We get the UFC. There's maybe four, five. He's like, so we look for the. And by the time they come to us, they have all these credentials in in regards to striking. So you get the best elite strikers versus the best elite. When the UFC, this guy might be get decent at this. This guy's decent at that. You know, so he he had a good point there. But my God, and how good is Stamp Fairtex? And the story leading up to this, when they post Angela Lee retiring, oh my God, dude. and when she had to go tell Stamp, she's like, hey, this is going to be for the legit belt. Yeah. Oh, my God. And Stamp's like, I'm going to try my best. I'm going to try my best. Kept crying, yeah. Yeah. She man. did it to Ham Sohi, too. She was before. Like, they didn't know. They thought it was just like a regular, what, like interim maybe. Yeah. But yeah. she's like, no, this is They both the... cried. They both love Angela. Who it does super it? Angela's yeah, the course. best. Yeah, yeah, the best. That absolute best. Shout out to her. Stamp looks so. And I keep telling you guys this. If you get a chance to watch Stamp Fairtex, you think she's just big, you know, in the Asian market. She is a bona fide superstar out her out here. I, I mean, I'm trying to think, as far as um, um, America goes. I mean, she's big, man, big, big. I don't care what organization you're talking about. It'd be tough to find someone bigger than Stamp Fairtex, and also skill wise. Oh, yeah, Again, to compare sure. it to to these other leagues. You know, they might have some wrestling background. They might be oh, a, a, a jiu-jitsu gold medalist, something like that. But Stamps' credentials, filthy. And in her in her walkout, she's just a unique character, man. Her walkout, when I when I saw in person walk, I'm like, oh, she's about to get beat up. She's dancing <laughs> yeah. around, doing these TikTok dances. Yeah. She's smiling. And this dance for this world championship was the best one yet. Full blown. I mean, N Sync vibe. Bye, bye, bye. Just doing the whole thing. I'm like, how does this girl? And then when she gets that cage, it's on. She's such a badass, dude. She's such a badass. Yeah. They they got a superstar there. They got a straight up superstar. I didn't realize, but Stamp, so I guess Stamp has been doing it since she was like a little kid. I yeah, saw have the you documentary. ever seen the video? Yeah, it's so crazy. Crazy. Like a little, little tiny, tiny kid. Tiny little kid, yeah. yeah. Tiny little kid. Mm. And then our girl, uh, Daniel Kelly, if you haven't seen the yep. one-on-one with Daniel Kelly, she's great. Philadelphia's finest. Her thing, and Jessica Khan is a bona fide world champion. Like, Gi Jiu Jitsu does all the big tournaments, ADCC, uh, International Brazilian Jiu Jitsu Federation. She does all that stuff, and she does well on that. Uh, she's a gold medalist. She's a badass. Daniel mm-hmm. Kelly's not. Daniel Kelly is a professional Jiu Jitsu player and doesn't have that same pedigree. So, for her, it was a big deal to go in there 
and and beat her and she did it yep she did she looked damn good too she looked really good doing it wonder girl lost that was a bummer she's way better than i thought i thought for sure she would, she would get destroyed yeah but she's really good she's fun to watch John Lineker, just savage. Of all the cards, I thought for sure that would be the TKO or KO. And that's the, <laughs> the one decision out of all the fights. It's freaking crazy. Yeah, because when you tune into it, you get, you get uh, Maurice and Blake Cooper TKO first round. Then you get Muay Thai and you get KO, uh, punch, head kick uh, in the third round, early in the third round. Then you get heavyweight TKO. Uh, it was a doctor stoppage, but still is entertaining. And then you get a KO in the third round. You get TKO th- uh, with three knockdowns. It was Muay Thai. And then John Lineker, you're like, this is definitely yeah, I thought for decision. Sure. And then uh, Wonder Girl uh, lost. But again, TKO. Daniel Kelly, jiu-jitsu match, submission mm-hmm. grappling. It was entertaining as shit. Um, shout out to Daniel Kelly there. And then you get uh, women's strawweight Muay Thai uh, fight. Uh, TKO, punches and elbows, third round. And then, of course, your main event, Stamp Fear Tex, um, becomes the Adam Weight World Champion. Yeah, one championship just does it right, man. Yeah. Does it right. They had one little hiccup, and Dana, <laughs> Dana capitalized on it, had one little hiccup. Yeah. But that's it. These promos didn't take stab. It's not a big deal. And when I saw them, I'm like, oh, man, what one championship do? All they did is when Daniel Kelly's walking out, they're mm-hmm. showing the one championship thing, and this dude, like, walks out sipping a big gulp. <laughs> just <laughs> A big goal. Yeah. He's like <laughs> sipping like a diet coke. He's holding some coffee, yeah. That guy just went down the road. He's like, whoa, wrong, <laughs> wrong, uh, wrong way. My bad. And then Dana tweeted out Espinosa's taking over the production for one FC. That was super funny. It's funny. Yeah, yeah. yeah, it's harmless. And then he went in on he went in on him for sure, which yeah. we don't need to go into. Mm-mm. Him and Espinosa hate each other. Just rich dudes arguing about rich shit. <laughs> You're like, okay. Yeah. It's a bummer. They're both. I feel like they could help each other out. Espinosa is wicked smart. I mean, of course, he made a freaking Stupid head of a damn smart. company. Yeah. yeah, yeah. What else you got, bud? Uh, so over the weekend, also Cedric Dombe, who was like a, a glory kickboxing champion, he, yeah, big, <laughs> big prospect, yeah, huge yeah. prospect, undefeated in the MMA so far. Uh, he came out with a bed during the walkout. And this is the PFL, and it says like uh, Jordan, his opponent, is going to go to sleep or something like that. Now, and what's interesting about this is the UFC passed on him. Yeah, I remember this too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And everyone's like, really? You sure? <laughs> and PFL was like, we'll take him. Mm-hmm. And then this dude is a savage. Yeah. But this is the, but this is great for PFL. It's exactly what you need. This is what Bellator needed. It's these guys that aren't already, you know, they have all the miles on them from the UFC and then come over to PFL or then come over to Bellator. Like, that's what one championship does. Mm. They do great. They build their own fighters, their own superstars across the board with Muay Thai, Jiu Jitsu. They have superstars. Mikey Mushimeshi competes this weekend against Aoki. Mm-hmm. Like, they have mass, they, they're doing their own thing. It's just not a, a runoff of the UFC, former UFC. Get, they don't do that. They build their own stuff. So, for PFL, this is going to be their biggest challenge. And getting this guy, thank God for PFL, the UFC, you know, turned it down because he's a killer dude. Yeah. The knockout was bad too. Yeah, nine seconds. Like that's like what a what a debut. Yeah. Um. Yeah. So. And he brought a bed. He brought a bed beforehand. It's saying his, his opponent's gonna go to sleep. <laughs> if you're fine, I'm like, what the hell? I know, dude. All right. Shout well, out to Cedric. I mean, did we kind of cover this a little bit? No, right? Not yet. No. Okay. So we were talking before the show. So Tyson Fury apparently has signed a contract to fight Alexander Usyk. Maybe like a month or two after. His It'd be in December. Was, It'd be he in said December. possibly January, but yeah, right now it looks like December twenty third. Even if it was in January, yeah, that's crazy. He, here's the here's the thing. Ingano's in twenty eight, October twenty eighth. Yeah, and, and that's for sure happening. October twenty eighth is happening. For him to schedule a fight against his toughest opponent in Usyk, by far his toughest opponent, Usyk is a bad man. As Stephen A. Smith says, the baddest man. This dude has never lost in anything, including checkers. This dude is a problem. I think two-time gold medalist in the Olympics, Ukrainian, never lost as a pro. He's the, to me, he's the, oh, damn near the perfect size. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, look at this. Uh, Olympic Games, gold. European Championships, gold. World, World Cup, you got silver. 
at heavyweight. Yeah, oh, just such a monster. Yeah, he just, he, he's such a savage. If you watch his uh, Anthony Joshua fights, he, he's a nightmare. Nightmare. He he's the one guy that you know. You talk about Joshua. You talk about any of the guys. Um, any of them against Tyson. I always I Tyson all day. I don't care who it is. Tyson all day. Usyk is the one where you're like, eesh, 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 eesh. He's a problem. He's a problem. Because, uh, you know, I think Tyson has an advantage over Joshua, Wilder, any of the big boys. Any of the big boys. He has an advantage over, he's just technically so much better. So much elusive, can fight forward, backwards, can do it all. Technical-wise, he's as good as they get. The one heavyweight who's better technically than uh, Fury is Usyk. He's a savage. He's a savage. That being said, this is the takeaway from them announcing weeks prior to him fighting Francis Ngannou. They think this is going to be the easiest fight of Tyson Fury's career. For them to go, yeah, but you have a fight October 28th. Yeah, yeah, we're fine. Let's do it in December. Yeah, but Usyk's going to be your toughest matchup. I know. This thing over here, this Francis guy, not a big deal. We're going to do this. It's so insulting if you're Francis in Gano's camp, they're just going, this is going to be a cakewalk, and we're going to use that to prepare for Uzi. We're just going to stay in camp. We're not worried about getting cut. We're not worried about taking any damage. This fight's going to be so easy. We're going to schedule the biggest fight of Tyson Fury's career a few weeks after. That is the biggest F you I've ever seen in combat sports. Lee Francis, I don't know what the minimum medical suspension boxing, but I really don't understand how Tyson can fight in December after what's going to happen on 10-28. Oh, I do. <laughs> That's basically Tyson going, we're not worried in any facet about This is a sideshow to me. To Francis, this is as real as it gets. To Tyson, he's like, yeah, I'm going to make that money. I'm going to embarrass this dude. And when then we'll just, I'll, I'll take a day off, maybe go to the pub. Hang out with my wife, shoot a shoot a reality show, and then we'll just jump in a camp and fight Usyk. You, this is the biggest flex I've ever. This is the biggest disrespect for a big fight like this that I've ever. This is the biggest disrespect in combat sports history. Him just going, yeah, I have a huge fight on the twenty eighth against this uh, UFC guy, but give me Usyk in December. They could have done this in March. <laughs> April, May, June. Even if he, for Tyson, the whole thing, if the boxing heads were like, how are you going to fight Francis? They, they hate this, right? This is a circus. You're going to fight Francis. Usyk is out there. You keep, you know, you're worried about Usyk. You, you're, you're, you're trying to shy away from fighting Usyk. And he goes, no, no. So to get all the boxing community off his back, he goes, watch this. I'll fight Francis, make all the money, right? And it's going to be the easiest payday in my life. And then also we'll negotiate an Usyk fight. Shut your mouth. <laughs> So the box community is like, oh, all right. I see what you did there. Because the Fury Usyk fight is the only fight. That's the only fight in heavyweight boxing that we need to see. That This is the fight. They could have done it in July of 2024. They could have done it in August. Even if he said, you know what, I'm going to fight Francis this December. Next December, I'll fight Usyk. We would have went, yay. <laughs> but this dude in his camp is so sure that this is going to be a cakewalk. These fools scheduled it weeks later. This is the biggest disrespect I've ever seen at this high level. It's so effed up. Frank's like, yeah, what the f-? And Tyson's like, yeah, yeah, that's what I think you meant. He doesn't need to talk. There doesn't need to be any trash talk before the thing. All he needs to go is, if I'm Francis, this is what I do before every single uh, like all the 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 pre-fight smack talk. As soon as you go, France, how do you about how do you feel about this fight? I go, Usyk, December twelfth. That's how I feel about it. I would just promote that. That's all I would do. <laughs> hey, are you worried about Francis and what he's gonna bring? He's a knockout artist. Oh, uh, good question. Usyk, check us out. Whatever it is, ESPN pay per view December fourteenth. See you guys there. <laughs> hey, how's camp going? Fantastic. Hey, make sure you check out Usyk December sixteenth. Live on Showtime. <laughs> That's all you need to say. Yeah. There's n- no respect for Francis. If I'm Francis, I'm like, oh, wow. A, you're like, you're pissed. B, you're a little bit like, huh, 
He really doesn't respect the mental him. games. Oh, you're really like, oh, damn, this <laughs> this fool booked the toughest fight of his career weeks after scheduling to fight me. So I'm Tyson. We don't need any witty comebacks. You don't need to make fun of him or, or check out my love handles, get a grip. None of that. None. Of, hey, are you worried about Francis Power? Great question. Make sure you check out Usyk and me fighting December 24th live on OnlyFans or whatever the hell it's going to be. <laughs> like literally just the, that's all you need to know. There's zero respect there. I saw that and went, oh, what a flex, dude. The, that is the best shit talking I've ever seen. And he didn't have to do it. He just called up his guy and went, hey, uh, yeah, just announced Usyk. When do you want to fight him? Uh, what are we in? Uh, do it in December. <laughs> Savage, dude. Yeah. Insane. I'm a little worried if I'm France. I'm like, oh, man, that's, he really thinks me that easy, huh? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, they do. They're not taking this serious at all. He's using you as basically live sparring before he fights Usyk. That's how much respect he has. Could Now, on the, the other side of that, if I'm Francis, all right, okay, this is good. He's not taking this serious. And when you hit as hard as Francis does, again, can he sit back and dance and pick uh, Fury apart? Absolutely not. But I don't care who you are. There's no man walking this planet. Maybe Roy Nelson is prime. But there's no man walking this planet who can take a flush right or left hook from Francis Ngannou and wake up. <laughs> it's not going to happen. So Francis has that nuke in his – he has that freaking African nuke in the back of his pocket. So if, if Tyson – and that's the only way Francis is going to win. Tyson has to just maybe glance at the clock in one millisecond and that, that right hand comes through and left hand comes through and this thing's over. It's the biggest upset in combat sports history. The, the Connor and Floyd, that was not a possibility. It's just not it, – that, that weight class, there's, it's not that one shot knock – if I don't, again, I can't emphasize enough. If you're Francis Ganu, if you're Usyk, if Francis hits you flush in the face, the night is over. So if so, this kind of this kind of puts more chips into Francis' corner. Going, all right, all right, because we're all in. Francis using this as a tuna. To Francis, this is a glorified sparring match. Okay. Oh, now remember, we have a chance. You should be worried if they're doing the countdowns and Tyson's saying how much he respects you and it's going to be the toughest fight. Then you'd be like, oh, damn, I'm getting the A version of Tyson? We don't have a shot, which that's a fact. But if we get just a B version of Fran or Tyson, okay, okay. Not bad. Not bad. The NFL scene is going strong. <laughs> All right, the NFL is here, baby. Jets didn't look terrible. Jets didn't look terrible. Not at all. They still didn't win, but still, uh, I'll tell you this right now. If that NFL broadcast mentions Taylor Swift one more time, I'm never watching the NFL again. I'll tell you that right now. And I'm a Taylor Swift. I'm a Swifty. I respect her. She's talented. If you mention her one more time, I'm never watching your product again. I know you guys don't care because you're the biggest league in the world, but I'm just saying, don't make me do it. If you mention Taylor Swift... One more goddamn time. I'm going to freak out. That being said, the NFL is here. And my Broncos, what's up? We look like the worst team in the league <laughs> last week. We, we dro they dropped 70 points on us. Okay? And then we played the Chicago Bears. I went, well, this is the worst matchup of all time. And they were looking like the worst team in the league besides the Pittsburgh Steelers. That's a whole other story. They look atrocious. But my Broncos came back, baby. What's up? What's up, Daddy? My Broncos came back. And look at the stats. Y'all want to hate on Russell Wilson, but he, look at his numbers compared to Patrick Mahomes. Suck it. So if you're an NFL fan or a college fan, how about my buffs? Only lost by seven. Not terrible. Here's why I'm not mad that they've lost two in a row. I wish they won, but we've already won this season. Now we play ASU next weekend. We're going to beat the living breaks off of them. But then we play UCLA at UCLA. I need them to lose two games so Daddy can't afford tickets for his family. Because before, when, when they were 3-0, and I looked at tickets. Hey, kids, we ain't going. They lose two games. Hey, kids, it's looking good. They beat SU, we're still good. They lose the SU, we definitely going. So it's a good thing, dude. It's a good thing is all I'm saying. So if you like to watch football and make bank, bro, so you can buy tickets for your kids you can't afford, like UCLA versus CU, 
You can go to DraftKings, bet five bucks on any game this week to score $200 instantly in bonus bets. And DraftKings isn't stopping there. All customers can take advantage of a sweeter offer every game day this October. It's Halloween season, baby. It's Halloween season. Get in on the game day greatness. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app now. Use the code SHOBSHOW. That's S-C-H-A-U-B show. New customers can score $200 instantly in bonus bets when you bet five on the NFL. That's code SHOBSHOW only on DraftKings Sportsbook, an official sports betting partner of the NFL. The crown is yours. Can you bet on how many times I mentioned Taylor Swift? There has to be an over-under. Guarantee it. I have to read that, don't I? Yeah. I'd rather you say Taylor Swift than read this right now. <laughs> Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER or visit www.1800gambler.net. In New York, call 877-8-HOPE-NY or text HOPE-NY. That's 467-369. In Connecticut? God bless you. Help is available for a problem gambling. Call 888-789-7777 or just get out of Connecticut. Or visit ccpg.org. Please play responsibly. On behalf of Boot Hill Casino Resort, Kansas, licensee partner, Golden Nugget, Lake Charles, L.A., 21 plus age varies by jurisdiction. Void in Ontario. Bonus bets expire 168 hours after issuance. See sportsbook.draftkings.com slash football terms for eligibility. And deposit restrictions, terms, and responsible gaming resources. If you're still listening, Taylor Swift, don't say it ever again. <laughs> DraftKings, promo code Shop Show. Oh, I this is one of my favorites. I met the owner of Sheath at the Skank Fest. Me and that guy really hit it across. Me and him are buddies now. This is my dude. These are the best underwear. You got to send me some, dude. The ones I have... Stains in them. So listen, I'm happy to welcome uh, Sheath to the shop show. Sheath underwear, baby. Sheath underwear makes the most comfortable briefs I've ever worn. This is no BS. These are the best undies that will ever touch your thick body. Every time you hear my voice or you see this brutal face, I'm in Sheath boxer briefs, baby. Their stretchy fabric is made of moisture. I think it's made of angel wings. I don't know. Talk to them about it. They're comfortable. And it's comfortable right in the best places. All right. After trying sheath, you can never go back to those old tired brands that your dad used to wear. It had peepee stains in the front. I love the dual pouches. They keep your man parts separated. Kind of, dude. Depends where you're at, right? Uh, sheath uses materials like bamboo and mesh for even more cool and comfort. All right. So go to sheathunderwear.com. That's S H E A T H underwear.com. Use the code SHOB, S-C-H-A-B, and you get 20% off the best undies made out of angel wings. All right? That's sheathunderwear.com. Today, use the promo code SHOB for 20% off. Oh, we ain't messing around. A little while ago, I had this crazy idea. I wanted to sell stuff uh, like merch for my shows and all the podcasts. And I didn't know where to get started. And then somebody said, why don't you go to Shopify? I went, what? <laughs> Shopify is the commerce platform revolutionizing millions of businesses worldwide. Whether you're a garage entrepreneur or IPO ready, Shopify is the only tool you need to start and run and grow your business without the struggle. Don't be struggle city, be Shopify city. Shopify puts you in control of every sales channel. So whether you're selling satin sheets from Shopify's in-person POS system or offering organic olive oil on Shopify's all-in-one e-commerce platform, we got you covered, man. And once you've reached your audience, Shopify has the internet's best converting checkout to help you turn them from browsers to buyers. All right. Shopify powers 10% of all e-commerce in the U.S. And Shopify is truly a global force. Plus, Shopify's award-winning help is there to support you every step of the way. This is a possibility powered by Shopify. All you got to do when you sign up for a $1 per month trial period at Shopify.com slash shop, all lowercase, S-C-H-A-B, small letters, lowercase. Go to Shopify.com slash shop to take your business to the next level today. Shopify.com slash shop. Cha-ching. Cha-ching. <laughs> now let's get back to the goddamn program. All righty. So unfortunately for Mark Hunt, he was trying to sue the UFC, obviously, because of his Brock Lesnar fight. He said they were, you know, they were, they knew that Brock was going to test positive and they still let the fight go, whatever. They but uh, he lost that fight. Yep. And Dana White says that he's going to have to pay some lawyer fees now. Yeesh. Listen, Mark Hunt has lost so many lawsuits against it's insane. He's a bit of a delusional guy. He's going to have to pay some legal fees. 
And their their lawyers are not cheap. Dude, I can't imagine doing that. That's gonna be tough. And this is just kind of funny. The Chael Sonnen's take on it was just basically like, dude, you you lo- you saw what Brock looks like. You know he's on stuff, so it's kind of a silly. That's what's tough, like, to <clears throat> just kind of piggyback on Chael there. Um, the issue is, is clearly we all know Brock was on stuff. I mean, stuff. come on. And you, but then you remember, it's not like there's no paper record of this. You signed the contract. We all know. And you signed that. Like, when I fought LeVar Johnson, I pleaded to the UFC. It doesn't matter at the end of the day. I was like, he's on steroids, dude. And Dan's like, nah, we'll see. I'm like, I'm telling you, I finished fifth in Olympia right now. Look at him. But I signed a contract. Then I went out there and beat them brakes off. <laughs> Shout out to Lamar Johnson. Didn't want to fight you. Wanted to grab you. <laughs> it was a takedown after takedown. Not fun for the fans, but your boy got paid. So the problem there is, is I knew he was on stuff, and I still signed the contract. That's the problem for Mark Hunt. So if he was like, nah, no, nah, I'm not fighting. He's on steroids. I'm not signing a contract. And they forced him to fight. Then you might have some there, but it's tough. So Jail goes on to say, you didn't need a drug test to know Lesnar was on steroids or was on steroids now or on steroids next week or on steroids <laughs> in college. Just look at him. You can take one look at him. You meet the guy who's going to the carnival and wants to yell at the worker afterwards. You saw the ride and you bought a ticket. Because if you're going to go on a carnival ride, you know there's a chance that things going to break down. And something could happen. That's he says, he's Mark saying. isn't wrong for doing this. I'm just bringing up a point, but Mark doesn't get to throw on a Mr. Surprise face when uh, a guy he knows is using steroids test positive for steroids. Agree. Yeah. Like, it's just part of the game, man. But I think he, he has so much kind of anger towards the UFC. This oh, is one angle, and lot. it's just a bad an- hill to die on. Uh, so this is kind of related to this in a, in a little way. Uh, Josh Thompson recently said that when Nate Diaz, <coughs> no, Nate Diaz popped in, like w- many years ago for some sort of thing that was in his supplements. Uh, and I guess from what Josh Thompson is saying that the UFC knew that he popped and they, they're like, hey, just fight anyways. Right. We'll, f- we'll handle it later. We'll talk about it later. And Nate said, no, I'm going to deal with it right now. Was this during this USADA is- days? Yeah. The early USADA days. Still USADA days. Yeah, yeah. So he says, when, I, uh, when I'm looking at Lesnar, I mean... Uh, okay, here we go. I, so this is Josh. I look at it this way. This is the thing. Look what they were trying to do with Nate Diaz. He tested positive, and they were like, you know what? We'll get all sorted out after. Nate said, F you. We can sort out now. That means they knew that Nate tested, and they were still going to let him fight. So I would not say that they have not tried to do that or would not do that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's the fight business. And and also, USADA is an employee of the UFC. That's always a weird thing, yeah. Yeah, they, they could control the narrative there, dude. It's like WWE testing. When you find out a guy tests hot, you're like, oh, man, they hate that guy. Yeah, yeah. You know? Yeah, yeah. Uh, he says, when I'm looking at Lesnar, I mean, I'm just thinking to myself, that was early and you said, I don't know. I don't want to say that they knew, but, oh, we all knew. Yeah, I mean, come on. Hey, and I don't <laughs> give a shit, Josh. Uh, which I'd only give you the case is that they tried to have Nate still fight and we'll deal with it after. I know people in Nate's camp said that they even tried to offer money. That's crazy. They tried to, like, we'll take care of it afterwards. No big deal. It's probably just a misunderstanding. Weed's a little different. Um, no, it wasn't weed. It was a, a, a something in a supplement. Like, maybe, like, you know those SARMs? Yeah. Well, that kind of stuff. In the oh, supplement. was it weed? No, no. It was something. Well, like that's a alarming. PD. I, I figured he tested hot for weed, and they're like, hey, let's just not get this announced and mess mm-hmm. with the, the pay-per-view buys. But when it's uh, failed for something else, that's a little dicey. They were like, hey, just be quiet and here's some money. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. But who knows if it's actually true. Everybody loves hot dogs. You find out how they're made. Everyone (laughs) loves fighting until you look at the underbelly. All righty. So also about testing, Logan Paul, he said for sure that Vada will be drug testing him and Dylan Dennis. Yeah, Dylan had some tweets about this, about About the drug testing. Oh, I, I, I just saw him saying like he he's done with everything. He's like I'm out. Whatever. No, but. I bet he's not out. It, again, if he is out, that's going to create a world of problems for of him. Of course, he should not. Because then, then you have Mike Perry, and that it's a very tough fight for Logan. Like yeah. what? Who's he? Who's he's been competing against? Like, I can't emphasize enough. Don't fight Mike Perry. You're not <laughs> yeah. going to beat Mike Perry, even though you might think your footwork's better. Your jab. Take all that out. This kid is a dog. A dog. He breaks dudes. He broke Luke Rockhold's teeth, Logan. So this is worst case for Logan because obviously Dylan's done his thing, built up the fight. It's obviously, you know, crossed the line a little bit. So now there's all these lawsuits. So then Dylan might have to pull out. All that being said, we all want to see him fight Dylan. 
And then insert Mike Perry, which nobody's talking about, but is a much, much different fight. This is this would be worst case scenario for Logan. I bet if Logan didn't do it again, I bet he wouldn't have signed Dylan. Now Dylan's done his job. He's kind of the the America's sweetheart now and kind of helped his career as far as that goes, not get so much hate, because there's more hate for Logan than there's Dylan. Him doing his thing, everyone's like, Yeah, get him. And then Dylan's this, you know, baby face now. But if he doesn't fight, then insert Mike. Perry and it's a fucking nightmare. So for yeah. Logan, if someone was like, "Hey, this kid's gonna trash your fiance," they're gonna build up all. He's gonna build the fight card, but you're not gonna fight him. You're actually gonna have to fight Mike Perry. He'd be like, "Oh my god, that's a terrible deal." Here he has money. An awful deal. So my my fiance is gonna get slut shamed through the roof, and then I can't even punch the guy in the face. No, no, no. Not only can you not punch him in the face. But the guy you're going to try and punch in the face, his name is Mike Perry. Who's that? Mm, exhibit A. He broke Luke Rockhold's teeth. That's what you're dealing with. He actually thinks you guys are pussies because you have gloves on. What? Yeah, he likes to do it bare knuckle. It's a nightmare, dude. Worst case scenario for Logan. Yeah. All right, next one. Steven Thompson. So, you know, there is like controversy about him not getting paid even though he made weight should have they still fight. haven't figured it out but uh so steven thompson did say that he believes that the ufc will pay him after his fight with shafkat and just give him like a pay bump you know basically a pay bump is more he just than assuming he that he said he's i guess his people are talking but then dana white like someone said you know someone asked him that at a post fight press conference for the contender series and dana's like if someone said it, if if Steven said it, then I guess it must be true. So who knows? Oh, that's, that's not true. good. I wonder if like when Dana, just when the big dog there. hasn't checked that box, yeah. he's like, yeah, guess if that's what Mick told him. But I, I'm not aware of that. Hopefully, he gets paid though. He'll get paid. The problem is, is you know, he wants somebody ranked ahead of him, and the UFC went say less. Say Used to, oh, you'll fight anybody ranked ahead of you? How about the guy who's just one ahead of you? He's like, wait, wait, what? It's Shavkat, and it's a terrible matchup for you. It's a little bit of a discipline thing. Oh, you don't want to fight that guy? But you do want a guy ranked ahead of you? Here's Shavkat. He's a nightmare. <laughs> yeah. I mean, so down. that's so cool that he's down to freaking fight Shavkat, though. Oh, that's yeah. That's insane. Wonder Boy ain't scared of nobody. yeah. yeah. All right, this is a pretty badass fight. Peter Great Yan, fight. Song Yadong. So it's in the works, at least, for December fight night. Yeah, but Peter Yan, you know, for whatever reason, once he lost to Sugar, it's kind of gone. It's been a tough, tough road for him. Yeah. Song Yadong's going to be a handful for him. It's a, it's a hard fight for sure. Yeah, for both guys. Yeah, but yeah. I'm, I'm early odds for me, is Song Yadong. I, I got Song too. Yeah. What a surprise. <laughs> No, I'm not gonna, dude, I'm Korean. He's like, yeah. I know, but all right, but all right. I, hey, I know. <laughs> I know. You're yeah, Korean. You're kind of, you're kind of right. You're kind of right. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So this was just a, a weird thing. So Tim Kennedy, he posts, he puts it on his X now. He goes robbery anniversary and the end of my fight career, dear Nevada NAC. Uh, if the combatant fails or refuses to resume competing when the bell sounds, the referee shall award. A decision of TKO. This is when he fought Yoel Romero. Remember yep. they had the whole gate. mess up thing? Yeah. It's called Stoolgate for the kids out there. No cap. Yeah. So he said referee. Obviously, John McCarthy was a referee. So John had this huge post uh -oh. about it. And John was the ref? Yeah. Uh-oh. Big John's a beast. He put, Tim, you're an amazing person. I truly wish the very best life has to offer you, <laughs> both you and your family. Perhaps I could have done something differently during your fight. Wish I had the forethought to envision this exact situation before it ever occurred, and that way I may have handled it differently. But you are not stating facts about what really happened. Yoel was told to stay seated by the uh, Nevada State Athletic Commission inspector. The truth is the cut man hired and paid for by the UFC did not re-enter the cage when summoned to do so, and that is what held up the start of the third round. So you're out of your goddamn mind. <laughs> <laughs> I added that in. Yeah. Uh, it is not you all's fault that this occurred and the cut man is not part of you all's official corner, dumbass. I also <laughs> added that in. Language bears did not help as well, obviously. It's ridiculous to penalize a person when they are not at fault and this is what there were no point deductions nor DQ. Was it completely fair to you? No, I don't believe it was. But there are times when there is no perfect solution in the moment. 
you definitely lost. I hope that the very best for you and all that you do. Big John. You added a little something. Yeah, I, I, I put a little more flavor yeah, in it. A little flavor. That was the context Big yeah. John was going to. He put, yeah. I hope the very best for you and all that you do. Quit crying, Big John. <laughs> I mean, that was. Yeah. Yeah, there's a million things that go on there. Yeah. Uh, so our boy, Matt Steamroller Favola, posted this recently on his Instagram. So he's been the underdog in all my, <laughs> the majority of his last fights, and he f- destroys everybody, right? I so, know. So this is, says his next opponent. It's a, it's a tough fight. It is, of course. It's a very tough fight. When I saw him, I'm like, oh, I thought they were yeah, getting Denise. Patty. But so he's uh, Denise is a minus 400, and then Frivola's plus, plus 330, 30. which is pretty big. But then Frivola put this uh, this picture right here. Underdog in all his last three fights. So against Drew Dober, he's a you know plus two eighty five, which in MMA is huge. Yeah. Uh, November twelfth, UFC two eighty one. He was a plus one hundred five. That's basically even money MMA. And then against Valdez, he was a plus one ten. Not terrible. But this mm. fight for him to be a plus four hundred, that's that's insulting. It's a very tough fight. Now you know we're first team all steamroller here. Yeah. I think he's gonna win. I don't like the fight for him, but I do believe he can get it done. Same. I think people are sleeping on his knockout power. And his caption is, hater to love it, the underdog's on top. Because he's always been on top as an underdog so far. Yep. In the last three. The UFC just ain't doing him any favors. I mean, come on, man. <laughs> he's a great dude. Help him out. <laughs> Help him out. I mean, do so, I mean, can we get a favorable fucking matchup? Speaking of matchups. Speaking of matchups, don't listen to my picks. And that's why I partnered up with Fantasy Guru. If you've been playing fantasy football, if you've been betting on the NFL, or the UFC, or whatever league you're betting on, take the experts' advice. That's why I partnership with Fancy Guru, because they take all the guesswork out, because these dudes are experts in the field of betting. Don't listen to my stupid picks. Listen to real experts. They're going to work hand-in-hand with DraftKings, so you can make a more informed pick for your shot over $1 million top prize every Sunday on DraftKings. All right, the experts are going to... Do all the work for you. All you got to do is join Fancy Guru. Go to FancyGuru.com. Use the code SHOB. You get 20% off all the site, so you get expert picks. Think about it. You sign up for that small fee, and you get 20% off using the code SHOB, right? But then you make more bank betting. It's brilliant. You want to make bank, bro? Use the experts. Don't listen to me or people like me on YouTube. We don't know what the hell we're talking about. These are <clears throat> legit experts. They're not biased like me. They didn't train with certain guys or have a favorite guy or because he has a big wiener. They always pick him. These are experts. All right. Fancyguru.com, promo code SHOB. You're welcome. This episode of the Shop Show is also brought to you by the best Kratom on planet Earth, the only brand that I trust to put in this sweet, sweet, thick body of mine. We talk about Happy Hippo. That's right. They have gummies. They have powders. They have uh, instant shots, which I always take the energy shots right here, the Kratom energy shots. This is the cherry pom-pom for pomegranate. They have the highly concentrated shots. Then they have their K-dips. Holler. You ever heard of Kratom K-dips? Never. Well, Happy Hippo did it. This is Winter Green. They have Razzle Dazzle. I prefer the Winter Green. These are Kratom extract pouches. Nicotine-free, tobacco-free, just best Kratom on the planet in pouch form. Holler. If you love all this stuff, you want to try Kratom, you want to get into it, have fun. It's a fun old road to go down. But you got to use Happy Hippo. Go to happyhippo.com. Promo code is THICK23. That's THICK with three C's. 23, you save 20% off everything I told you about. Gummies, powders, it's con- highly concentrated shots, energy shots, the K-dips. We got it all. Don't go anywhere else. Just go to happyhippo.com, promo code THICK23. Let's get back to the freaking program, Chin. All righty. Oh, this is kind of cool. Paul Felder. Uh, so rumors are he will be returning to fight at UFC 300. God, who would they give him? I don't know. No idea. But, I mean, the fact that he's coming back, he has, like, such a great job as a I know. Know, commentator. I know, but he said uh, the, cre- zombie, the zombie yeah, fight. Inspired him. Yeah. Now, if you think you're getting the send off zombie did, that's going to be tough to duplicate. <laughs> that's going to be tough. That's going to be very tough. You and know? it happened. Remember you showed me the video? Like, Jay Park? Yeah. A huge area where they were seeing zombie. That yep. was so Nuts. dope. Yeah. Nuts. But, yeah, shout out to Paul Felder. Yeah. All right. Um, Jared Gordon posted this. That uh, since he's fighting at 295, which remember we looked at the ticket prices and they're insane. It was like 700 bucks or something was the minimum and 112 or something was mm-hmm. the max. So Jared Gordon posted something on either Twitter or his Instagram showing that he paid 22,000 
roughly twenty two thousand dollars for his tickets for his family and friends. Oh, so he's fighting for free. <laughs> and then uh, people were freaked out because obviously that's hey friends and family. The five tickets for that are two thousand each. <laughs> how about you chip in a little bit? Who knows if the they did though? Seven of you fucks for the twelve hundred dollars a ticket. How about you chip in a little bit? The five at six hundred, that's acceptable a little bit. But God dog. Also, how a hey, UFC. Could you give him a promo code no, for he 10% did. off? So this is with the promo. That's why you see 600. <laughs> I think the lowest was like seven or eight. So this is with the discount. And oh. he, was, he was getting UFC props, too. He was like, yeah, they gave me a discount. Shout out to UFC, man. Only $22,000 <laughs> to bring my family. That's how crazy we are. Yeah, so. <laughs> These are discount tickets I got through UFC for my fight at Massacre Garden for some family and friends. UFC has some loyal fans. We sell out an arena close to 20,000, some odd seats at prices higher than these. Love you all. Thanks, UFC. Ja- Jared, 22,000, bro. And then he was upset because Bloody Elbow posted it and he thought it would, they were talking smack or something. He goes, What the F is this? Well, that's what Bloody Elbow does. Well, was, okay, so they did just post what it, he but did. But I'm, I'm with Bloody Elbow on this little yeah, bit. Yeah, yeah. I'm not looking at it going, Hell yeah, dude, you got hooked <laughs> up. I'm with Bloody Elbow. Like that, but I'm 100% with Bloody Elbow. How all of us are like, Hey, that's actually a good deal. <laughs> no, no this that. guy is in a fist fight in Mass Square Garden and he has to pay $22,000 in tickets. In order for his family to watch him compete, With a he is an employee, well, subcontract employee of the <laughs> UFC. This guy's not making Conor McGregor, uh, Izzy, Sean Strickland style money here. Twenty-two thousand is all the money in the world. Yeah. Here. Then Bloody Elbow goes. This story is the prices. No one twisted your words or misrepresented you. No one said you were ungrateful. You shared it publicly. The price is just very high. And then. <laughs> Jerry Gordon says, okay, thanks for clarifying. <laughs> yeah, it was if weird. I'm with Buddy Elbow. Hey, hey, this isn't normal, everybody. This is not good that a fighter has to pay $22,000 out of his own money so his family can watch him fight. This isn't a flex. This is not good. That is insane. I, would, ugh, I can't imagine. Uh, I'd be like, oh, just watch it at home, though, right? Because I'm not making a million bucks. Even though I was making a million to spend twenty two thousand on I tickets. I can't imagine that. Yeah. Hopefully And you're in New York, so that means really you gotta make about forty four thousand just to cover that. Hopefully they all pitched in though. They did it. <laughs> you know for a fact. I'm positive. I don't know how family works. Uh so this is Zhang Wei Lee on Instagram. They also need spending money, Jared. So it's gonna be more like twenty five thousand total. Because they need you have to pay for everything. They need snacks. <laughs> Parking ain't cheapy. Oh my god, he's paid for parking. Mass Square Garden parking, it's gonna be more like thirty grand total. And then we can't drive back with all this traffic, so you need to book a Uber. room near Mass Square Garden <laughs> now. And we get hungry, we need room service. It's gonna be about forty-seven thousand dollars total Damn. now. What's this? Uh, Zhang Wei Li, I don't know where this might be at the PI, but so Zhang Wei Li actually picked up Shaq. He's like what three hundred, almost four hundred pounds. Uh, yeah, he's seven four. So she picked him up for a little bit of there. She little picked bit him there. up for a very hot but second. Think about it. She's so tiny. Okay, I hate this video. <laughs> it went a little bit viral, so. That's uh, interesting. This I figured she like picked him up and like spun him around. I mean, I'm sh- I think she probably could. She did this. Yeah. She went like this and was like, "Whoa!" So so this video, I don't know what, which fight this is from, but this is John Anik and Joe Rogan getting too excited and pushing him, and then so John Anik and Freak MMA posted this <laughs> watch <laughs> it says poor Anik. <laughs> he's all, but why do he why do he continue to push I don't know. Joe's all day but when you're excited I do the same shit too that's hilarious yeah that's super funny Anik's all oh, oh. <laughs> um oh this is just okay so Dylan Dennis is sparring with Alex Pahea now and then when I looked at their height difference as at least when they're sparring they're not too different but Alex is definitely bending down a lot yeah. So I didn't and realize Dylan, Dylan has, was that Dylan tall. has shoes on, too, there. Oh, yeah, you're right. <laughs> and Alex uh, is barefoot. Yeah. We're all out of uh, current events, huh? <laughs> this is where I go towards... Tunes all real quick, Dylan Downs. Check out, I'm sweating here. So this is where I go towards, like, the... You know, I get the fun yeah, stuff. The fun stuff. Yeah, and this is Dana White posting again about his new his body, his figure. He, he looks, looks great. He's jacked, dude. 
Uh, where's USADA, though? I'm with Nina on this. Let's get USADA there. He looks fantastic. He does, especially for his age. I'm not sure how. Is he in his 50s? or Hell yeah, 40s? he's in his 50s. 50, 56, damn near 60, bro. He's no jacked. way. Oh, dude, he's, fi- he's him and Rogan are the same age. 54. Oh, 54 yeah, I think shit. Rogan's 55. I think Rogan's 56. Um, you want to do some fan questions real quick? Tomato, tomato. <laughs> uh, fan questions? Sure. All right. So this is one that we missed last week because we had back-to-back-to-back shows. We didn't have enough time. I did three on Monday. I know. It, it was, was crazy. Tough. So from Power Structure, any chance we'll see Bryce Mitchell, Eddie Bravo, and Sam, Sam Tripoli on a Calabasas Fight Companion? Wow. That's a great idea, my man. Yeah. Uh, next big pay-per-view, October 21st, Makachev, Charles Oliveira. I'll be doing one with Rogan. But then we have two major ones, November, December. Eddie and Sam are here. I would just have to fly in Bryce Mitchell. That's a brilliant idea. That's a, yeah. And I wouldn't so have to fun. do any talking. <laughs> yeah. I, you know, they, they, they got their black belts. All, obviously, all of us got black belts in jiu-jitsu, except for Sam. But when it comes to conspiracy, I am a one-stripe white. They're all black belts. So I'll just sit back and go. That's a great idea. Cool. We're going to try to make that happen, matter of fact. Hell yeah. Uh, so this is from Prince Vegeta, son. Uh, who will be the first person to lose their belt in 2024? Mm-hmm. There's just a few of them here. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, I don't know why Jamal Hill's still there. Oh, because it's not taken yet. Uh, man, that's a good question. Uh, not Alexa. Uh, Wele. I Wele? think Swarza beats her. Damn. Yep. I think Wele, or depending what matchups they give Sean Strickland or Leon Edwards, I think there's going to be a lot of movement with the belts. Leon Edwards had some tough fights. We'll see with Colby. Uh, if Muhammad gets a chance, I think he could get it done. With Strickland, depends what they want to do. Uh, if Hamzat wins, the, the Hamzat-Strickland fight is a very tough fight for Strickland. Um, with Tatiana Suarez versus Wele, I think Tatiana eats her alive. Um, so there's, there's some tough ones. Pantoja, you know, that Moreno fight was super close. That could go either way. So there's going to be a lot of shifting of the belts. The only one that's not going to shift is uh, at heavyweight and uh, Volkanovski at featherweight unless he uh, gives up the belt. All righty. So Ryan Sutherland, does PFL and one championship explode more in popularity in the next couple of years? If so, what effect will that have on the UFC? None. I, th- I think the UFC is the Coca Cola of you know of fighting. So it's or the Kleenex of tissue paper. So the the it's, in America, it's a, it's a one man race or one brand race. But when it comes to international, one championship's doing their. This is why I messed with one championship. They're doing their own thing. They're not a byproduct of the UFC like every other league. Every other league takes shots at Dana and we're gonna do this, and they're just a real really shitty virgin the ufc whether it's the owners of the league trying to be all brash like dana even though they don't have 400 million in the bank from fighting you know that it's everyone tries to mimic and be a real crappy version of the ufc and it's just it's not good one championship is in their own lane doing their own thing with world-class strikers world-class grapplers world-class mma huge events they're so they're over here ufc's over here so when it comes to UFC one championship, one's Coca Cola, one's Pepsi, both massive. Everybody else is your surge of the sport, your Josta, your freaking Jamba juices, bullshit. They might get a big splash in the pan, you know. Doesn't matter. Fair enough. It's it, it's a it's a two man race, and everybody else is just picking up pieces, mimicking one championship in UFC. Everybody else ain't shit. Yeah, the the one was so freaking so good, good. It was and the so production yeah. and the different you know martial arts from Muay Thai to yeah. Jiu Jitsu to MMA, it's nuts, dude. Yeah, it was fun, so much. And fun the production's watch. world class. The belts legit. Oh, you. So it is like twenty six pounds. That's what I, I told Dana yeah, Kelly. I'm like, insane. you better you better hit the gym, girl. You can start wearing that belt around. Um. All right. So last question is from Metal Sonic. Do you think we'll see more fighters getting knocked out trying to? Trying and failing to use the Philly shell due to Strickland's recent no, success. No, his style is so unique. No, no one's going to be able to mimic that. 
that's a very 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 unique style it, and that's also not a style that you can really mimic it that's from years and years of just sparring non-stop and being elusive and that it's like you can take some things away from izzy when you watch him or robert whitaker or wonder boy or ian gary and can see how you can get there with strickland it's such a on conventional style no coach the next day i was like all right today we're working on the philly shell for ufc people are gonna get kicked in the fucking face left and right so no i don't think it's gonna happen that's a bad idea uh as far as fight wise you have a big fight card one championship doing the damn thing again you got your main card on amazon prime our boy mikey mushameshi going at it again submission grappling against the legend yep. aoki you guys know how i feel about mikey mushameshi doing the goddamn thing uh, you also got some big old fights on there as well. You got the featherweight kickboxing. Uh, say his name, Chin, because so I, I keep messing it up. <laughs> Hit it. Tell about Tawan Chai? Tawan Chai. Yeah, he's a freaking badass. Yeah, Super badass. Yeah. The dude looks like he's doing computer programming mm -hmm. while kicking in the face. Yeah. There's no... There's no grimacing. There's no expression. He is a straight-up savage. Then you got Tai... Tai Lee? Tan Lee. Tan Lee. Tan Lee. Yeah. Tan Lee. You guys know Tan Lee, uh, if you're just kind of American casual. He was on Dana White Contender Series. He was on The Ultimate Fighter. Uh, he fought in uh, Legacy as well. So he's been all over, but then he's also a former world champion with one championship, and he is a straight-up savage. He's fun to watch, man. So that's your main event. Um, you got Jonathan uh, DeB DeBella, who's the champion in kickboxing. That's strawweight fight. Uh, Taiwan Chi, who we also love. And they also got Mikey Mushameshi fighting. It's a great card. I'm telling you, man, you got to get on this one championship train. If you like mixed martial arts, if you like martial arts in general, they're doing the damn thing. All right. And starts, uh, that's October 6th. Friday, 8 p.m. Eastern. 8 p.m. Eastern. So that's 5 o'clock here. Yeah. Enjoy that. It's on Amazon Prime. You know one championship. Amazon go together like peanut butter and jelly. Get you some. Then you have a fight night. UFC fight night. Um, Grant Dawson, I think, what's this kid, won nine in a row? Something he's had like a draw, that, yeah. one in nine a uh, row against Bobby Green. I assume he's the favorite. Favorite fight on the card, there's two of them. Alex Morano and Joaquin Buckley is phenomenal. And then Drew Dober, Ricky Glenn is a great fight. Uh, Alex Hernandez on there. Uh, Carolina is on there. Uh, he gets a decent fight night. But Grant Dawson, if you haven't checked him out, make sure you do. He is a straight savage. Bobby Green's always fun. Uh, Joe Pfeiffer's a monster. I love that fight. Like, that's a great card. Joe Pfeiffer, Abdul, uh, Alex Morano, Moreno, Joaquin Buckley, Drew Dober, Ricky Glenn, Philip Linz, Cuda Libra, Alex Hernandez. It's a great fight night. And the former stripper, Vanessa Demopoulos, the one that always jumps on Joe Rogan after she oh, wins. Yeah. Yeah. Shout out to her. She started off. She's cool. <laughs> <laughs> yep, that's pretty much it, though. All right, kids, that's it. Next up for me, uh, I'll be doing sets around L.A. Then I'm in Dubuque, Iowa. Dubuque. Dubuque. Dubuque, Iowa. One show Friday, 7 p.m., one show Saturday, 7 p.m. That's October 13th and 14th. Then I'm in Niagara Falls, New York, November 4th and 5th. That's at a casino in Niagara Falls, New York, November 5th and 4th. So that's a Friday, Saturday, one show each night. Those are almost sold out, so make sure you get your tickets. So it's my fans, not the casino fans. Now I'm in Chicago, December 8th and 9th. Two shows Friday, two shows Saturday. I got a bunch of other dates coming up. Uh, it's the Keep On Trucking Tour coming straight to you, son. We're going to have a bunch of dope uh, auto content with my truck and a bunch of other stuff going on. Stay tuned for that with the, with the transformation to the TRX Demon with Overkill. That's all coming out. I'll be posting my Instagram. We'll have a bunch more news as regards to all the truck stuff and tuning and all that okay kids love you enjoy one championship this friday on amazon prime be nice to each other i'm out